without the remarkable leadership of our co-chairs, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds and President Allen, who will be up here shortly. I'm going to start with Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, who is pretty fresh off a plane from Vietnam, which I think is 13 or so hours ahead of us, so it's last night to her, probably still. But let me at this time welcome uh, co-chair Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, a great champion for STEM education in Iowa. And while she makes her way up the stage, I want you to know that tomorrow, noon to 1.30, she's doing a live webinar through the national STEM organization called STEM Connector. If you're interested in, in participating in that webinar, log on to STEM Connector today and get registered for a noon to 1.30 national exposure for Iowa STEM tomorrow, thanks to our Lieutenant Governor. With that, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds. Well, thanks so much, Jeff, and good morning. I am absolutely thrilled to welcome everyone to the Governor's Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Advisory Council's second annual STEM Summit. I want to thank you for all that you've done to make the Governor's STEM Advisory Council a success since it was established just a year and a half ago. That success really is due to the vision and the hard work by both council members and many others who have served in many capacities and have supported Iowa's STEM initiative in many ways. And I just want to tell you, it has truly been an honor for me to serve with you. The Council's accomplishments in this short time are simply amazing. With the generous $4.7 million appropriation from the 2012 legislature, we've made significant progress, progress towards our goal of raising student interest and achievement uh, in STEM, which in turn will provide Iowa's young people with more career opportunities, and this will um, promote STEM economic development. Six regional STEM hubs have been created at Drake University, Southwest Community College, Iowa Lakes Community College, Iowa's three state universities, including the University of Iowa partnering with Kirkwood Community College. And each hub benefits with guidance from its regional advisory board, working to meet STEM needs in every single sector of the state. We've had a pool of 12 scalable, high-quality STEM education programs that was established, and some or over 38,000 students across the state are benefiting from those programs this school year. The Council's Executive Director, Jeff Weld, and the six regional STEM hub managers have worked incredibly hard to get those programs into the hands of Iowa educators and children as quick as possible with a very, very narrow time frame and really to build regional STEM efforts in a, a variety of other ways. On Monday, the Council announced the outstanding STEM programs that were selected for the scalable pool for the 2013-14 school year. They selected nine out of 37 applicants, and I deeply appreciate that many strong applications from STEM program providers and the careful work and review that the review panel did to put together its recommendations. Five programs in the pool continued from this year are HyperStream, a World in Motion, Engineering is Elementary, Curriculum in Agriculture Science Education, and Health Careers Connection. And the four additions to the pool are Defined STEM, Camp in a Can, Project Lead the Way, Gateway to Technology Program, Carolina Curriculum in Science and Technology. And I'm pleased to announce that applications to participate in the 2013-14 are now being taken from schools, after school clubs, and others wanting to provide Iowa children with more STEM opportunities. Uh, to get that information, you need to go to iowastem.gov, and that's where you can uh, go to apply to participate in one of the STEM scale-ups. If the 2013 legislature appropriates another $4.7 million as requested, we expect the programs to be delivered to even more children next year. We're extremely encouraged by an early survey result where 87% of school districts responding reported that the 2012-13 scale-up programs increased STEM achievement among students either quite a bit or a great deal. 
So thank you to all the educators across Iowa who have participated in delivering those programs this school year. And I want to continue to um, encourage more educators and after school programs to go to iowastem.gov and expand that um, participation. In just a moment, I'm going to turn the podium over to my co-chair, University of Northern Iowa President Ben Allen. But first, however, I want to note that this is the last time that the entire 40-member STEM Council will gather together uh, before President Allen steps down as the co-chair this summer when Vermeer President and CEO Mary Andringa will become the next co-chair. Um, it has been just a tremendous honor for me to serve alongside President Allen, and I know every member of this council feels the same way. We have been so fortunate to have his guidance, his thoughtful insight, leadership, background and experience. He is a dedicated public servant and we have been extremely blessed to have him leading and being a part of this initiative. We would not have been as successful, Ben, without you being a part of it. So please, let's stand and give Ben a round of appreciation. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for your kind words. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, it has been an honor to serve as co-chair with Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, and uh, if you've been around her at all, you know that her insights and energy and enthusiasm and knowledge of this subject matter has really helped create uh, a greater awareness of the importance of STEM and how it needs to be integrated into our schools, maybe in a different way. It has really been an a, a energetic infusion of, of, I suppose, of some type to have more public-private partnerships. And uh, it creates a great excitement for the scalable project. So I thank you. And she is a tireless advocate for STEM education throughout the state of Iowa, not just in Des Moines, not in the large cities, but throughout the state of Illinois. So, I mean, uh, Iowa, but I mean, maybe Illinois too now with the STEM connectors. So, thank you very much for this. <laughs> I also want to thank Jeff Weld and, and Carrie and, and, and Tanya. Um, uh, it's amazing what they can do with so little. Uh, I also want to um, acknowledge the six regional managers. I think five are here today. Uh, this group of individuals really represents the operating leadership team and, and more than operating, but, but it's a small but fearless leadership team. Uh, no matter how complex, how large a job it is, they get it done on time and they get it done within budget. So thank you, Jeff, and your team for your work. So. But I thank all of you for being here today. Now, this is an important summit. Uh, the Governor's STEM Advisory Council has received strong bipartisan support through funds as noted by Lieutenant Governor Reynolds. Last month, we held STEM Day at the Capitol with a large turnout of legislators for the numerous exhibits that we had. And we have four members of the General Assembly who are involved with this council. And three of those were able to come, and the fourth one would have been there, but he was chairing a committee. We have very committed members on this group, including Representative Josh Burns, uh, Representative Sharon Steckman, Senator Mark Shelgren, and Senator Brian Shane John. So we thank them for their work. The Lieutenant Governor mentioned, uh, gave you a very good update of what is going on with the scalable projects and, and other issues. I'd like to maybe just talk briefly about uh, moving forward. Uh, in addition to the continuation of the scalable STEM education programs for this coming year, there will be other projects and initiatives being discussed, refined, and possibly implemented. In the spring of 2012, seven advisory council working groups presented 19 transformative recommendations. From these 19 recommendations, a revised and refined list of seven recommendations was created. And those recommendations, seven, or six or seven, depends how you count those, will be the focus for the next several years. 
In the fall of 2012, the implementation teams were launched to address the seven priorities and recommendations, and some input teams were created also. We secured uh, about $50,000 from businesses to support the hiring of Kerry Campbell and Associates from Dubuque to facilitate seeking additional grant support. It is very important that we leverage the state money with additional money from other sources. This fall, Lieutenant Governor and I held 19, that's not quite right, she held 19, I got to about 16 of them, I think, uh, community conversations throughout the state of Iowa. Uh, and it was uh, really a very educational activity for me. Uh, we did this so that we could inform the people throughout the state about the STEM initiative, but more importantly, to seek their input, to get their perspective, not only in those seven recommendations, but the STEM initiative in general. I thought those visits were very productive and in spreading the word about STEM, but also learning about what the citizens, teachers, everybody were talking about what they thought we should be doing here with this initiative. Overwhelmingly, their comments indicated a need to focus on a couple things here. So I'll, I'll list, there are quite a few items, but I'll narrow this down to about six. They first said, many said, increasing public-private partnerships and leveraging our state support for additional funds is very important. Secondly, we need to explore how to develop STEM-focused schools that are appropriate for Iowa. Third, the importance of professional development for teachers needs to be highlighted. Fifth, if I'm counting right, or fourth, this is math and sciences, <laughs> increasing access to learning opportunities and engage families in learning about STEM. And maybe the one that we heard most consistently was that we need to provide alternative pathways to teacher licensure for professionals in the field. We have also increased the data and processes for accountability with mid-year surveys on the scale-ups, as reported by Lieutenant Governor, and the employment of 18 performance indicators. The performance indicators focus on four primary areas, STEM preparation of teachers for K through 12 students, STEM achievement and interest among K through 12 students, STEM post-secondary completions, and STEM employment. And now, as we continue our work in the implementation of year one and prepare for year two, we look forward to the breakout sessions today that will delve into the next steps for a systemic STEM reform. In order to have sustainable success, we need to have supportive policies, cultures of innovation, public-private partnerships, and strong public support. Therefore, the breakout sessions today, including statewide broadband access, STEM license and endorsement, informal STEM networks, non-traditional pathways to STEM classrooms, STEM professional development, STEM-focused schools, and business engagement in STEM are critical areas of work that are needed in this continuum of STEM reform. We need your innovative ideas today as we move forward to implement change that will transform the STEM landscape of Iowa. Again, thank you for coming today in this challenging weather condition. Your participation is important as we move forward with this important statewide initiative. Thank you.